Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be reading the creepypasta called Mr. Tickle Twist. The original author of this creepypasta was Professor Creep. I'll be putting a link in the description below so you could check out the story for yourself. Also, I would like to give a shout out to Wolfpack. Thank you Wolfpack for suggesting the story. I really enjoyed reading it. Also, I would just like to say that if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video. It helps me out a lot. Again, thank you Wolfpack for your suggestion. I appreciate it greatly. And without any further ado, let's get right into the video. I live in a small village in the western countryside of England, though I better not tell you which, for your own safety above all else. A lot of this won't make sense at first, but bear with me, there's a lot I need to say. Let me just start from the beginning. My village has a population of 178 people at the time of writing this, the oldest being my grandfather. Now he isn't just well known around the village because of that. He is also the only living person in the village alive when Phantasmos Funland was still open. Phantasmos Funland was a carnival opened between 1956 to 1959. The reason the carnival closed after only three years of service was because one day in June of 59, Phantasmo got up and left, without warning. Well, according to my grandfather anyway. My grandfather was six at the time, the first and last time he went to the carnival. His mother had terminal cancer and only had mere months to live, while his father was lost at sea when he was just mere months old. His mother wanted to make every last second with her son a memorable one, so she took him to Phantasmos Funland. The village was larger then and the carnival was quite the tourist attraction, so the park was packed out. As my grandfather and his mother fought their way through the crowd, they suddenly heard a loud voice announcing, gather around. With every each of the voice came another wave of people pushing and shoving until eventually my grandfather was separated from his mother and pushed into a red and purple striped carnival tent. My grandfather got to his feet, his eyes adjusted to the newfound darkness. In the center of the tent was a circular shroud where the light from seams didn't quite reach. Within the shroud, he could make out a face, not a normal face, mind you, but still a face. The face itself wasn't exactly monstrous, it just wasn't human enough to not be unsettling. Long, pointed cheekbones and a sharp chin, accompanied by white skin and perfectly chiseled eyebrows made it almost amusing to look at if it wasn't for the smile. It wasn't the cliché, wide, horrifying grin. It was more mischievous, like a child who had just pulled it off the biggest prank of his life. The combination of these features made it strangely creepy. My grandfather was awestruck. Being a naive child, he didn't understand the dangers, although None of us could have predicted the events my grandfather would set into motion that day. He approached the figure, eyes glued to the unmoving face. That's when he first heard creaking. At this point, my grandfather would always stop telling the story and stress to me about the creaking. How if you heard it, it was already too late. Anyway. Once my grandfather was within reaching distance of the figure, he could make it out more clearly. The thing was made of wood, crudely painted like some sort of mini clown hybrid, black and white striped overalls with splashes of colorful polka dots 
its eyes look it down at my grandfather almost sincerely contrasting with the excessively mischievous smile and overly pointed features a top hat of a strange material adorned the lakey figure's head slightly obscuring its glassy eyes he could also see a small box nailed to the strange statue's chest with a bronze plaque attached reading pennies please my grandfather looked at the particular entry with anticipation of its function reaching into the very depths of his pockets he retrieved a small copper coin and raised it above his head towards the light to ensure it was indeed a penny as he did so out of the corner of his eye he noticed that the figure's eyes had now widened it and were now fixed on the coin my grandfather stood on his tippy toes to reach the lengthy statue's chest he noted how when he pushed the coin into the brass slot he never heard it land standing away from the oak creature my grandfather noticed the pin drop silence he found it strange that a once bustling carnival was now dead silent in fact it was so quiet it became deafening until the silence was shattered by the echoing creaks coming from the wooden oddity after a few moments of small creaks and snaps the creature sprang to life it snapped into different shapes as if stretching after a long slumber it moved in an exaggerated fashion like some sort of cartoon it twisted its torso left then right as if looking for the hero that freed it from its sleep finally it tilted its head down creating a snapping sound as it did so ah why well, hello young man it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance the creature bellowed in a well spoken voice curling out its long pointed wooden hand to my grandfather my grandfather didn't move just stood and stared absolutely awed struck by this magnificent being it recoiled its hand and looked it to its sides as if embarrassed the creature then went on to thank my grandfather furiously before composing itself and standing at attention with a jolting flick of the hand the creature pulled it off his hat taking a bow as he did so it then announced his name mr tickle twist at your service it then lifted its head from the bow until it was right in my grandfather's face revealing his eyes were more than glass they look realistic the left eye was emerald green and the other was dirt brown while the hat now looked to be made of stitched leather i have a proposition for you young man mr tickle twist announced he swung his torso back and with a magical motion of his fingers he produced a coin like mr tickle twist it was made of wood mr tickle twist tossed the coin down to my grandfather as he examined it he noted the two carvings on each side one side depicted a top hat while the other side showed a ringmaster's cane my grandfather looked up at the strange clown-like figure in confusion mr tickle twist carried on his pitch you see young friend i like making people happy so i'll give you the chance to get anything you desire my grandfather's eyes lit up with excited curiosity and mr tickle twist recognized that smiling that mischievous smile and once again curled his spindly arm down to him does that sound good my grandfather nodded his head and shook its hand without hesitation knowing it would seal the extraordinary deal pleasure doing business with you friend 
Now there is a slight catch I may have forgotten to mention. Mr. Tickle Twist's mouth curled into a half smile as my grandfather looked on with a now suspicious glare. Now, now, young man, let me explain. You see, if I just granted every wish everyone asks for, then there would be chaos. There has to be some sense of chance. This is a carnival, after all. He announced it as if saying the punchline of a joke. The coin you now hold is the item of chance. Flip it, and if it lands on the cane side, then you will be granted any wish you so desire. Mr. Twinkle Twist squinted his eyes and his smile widened. However, if the coin lands on the top hat side, then, well, let's just say, I take something from you instead. My grandfather didn't like the way Mr. Tickle Twist said those last words, and despite his young age, Looking up at the letter hat and the real looking eyes, he knew that wouldn't be pleasant. Mr. Tickle Twist cracked his wooden knuckles before folding his arms as if waiting for my grandfather to proceed with this fantastical carnival game. Looking down at the coin, my grandfather positioned it upon the nail of his thumb, cane side facing up, and flicked his thumb as hard as he could, sending the coin Skyward. Flipping so fast, it became a light brown blur as it slowed in the air and began the descent back down to the child. My grandfather held out both hands to catch it, but he never got the chance. Mr. Tickle Twist snatched the coin from the air with tremendous speed. He then cradled it against his chest, opening his hand slightly obscuring my grandfather's view. Mr. Tickle Twist looked down for a moment before his eyes slowly crept up to my grandfather and he began to smile ear to ear. He then began shouting and dancing, Congratulations, young man! Revealing the coin to show a ringmaster's cane. My grandfather exhaled a sigh of relief and waited to be prompted for a wish. However, that's not what Mr. Tickle Twist did. Instead, he began to slink around my grandfather like a snake until his wooden lips were next to my grandfather's ear. Before he whispered, Your poor mother. My grandfather was taken back as he snapped his head to be face to face with the now slinking clown. Ah, uh, yes, my boy, I know all about that, and I know more, but that's besides the point. Mr. Tickle Twist then slithered back to his place in the shroud. That's what you want, isn't it? For your mother to beat the unbeatable. Well, that can be arranged, my young friend. His voice slowed and deepened. My grandfather hesitantly nodded only thinking of his mother's well-being. Very well. Mr. Tickle Twist croaked, walking towards my grandfather and towering over him. Crouching besides to the, his level, he extended a single pointed finger and pierced my grandfather's chest, sending a sharp pain pulsing through his body. My grandfather fell backwards, landing on his backside and clutching his chest. As he looked it up, he managed to catch Mr. Tickle Twist vanish in a desaturated red puff of smoke, leaving nothing but the coin alone in the shroud. Just then, my grandfather heard gasp and screams from outside the tent. Getting to his feet, he scooped up the coin and rushed it outside to find a huge crowd of people staring in awe at something on the ground. Pushing and crawling his way through the sea of people, he eventually emerged, face to face with his mother. Her eyes glazed over and unmoving, her mouth twisted in a frozen state of terror. My grandfather grabbed 
his mother's shoulders, shaking her, tears of pain and confusion streaming down his face, begging her corpse to come back. The last thing he remembers from that day was a cold hand on his shoulder, turning to see a manacled wooden grim before everything went dark. He awoke during the dead of night inside the tent that harbored the wooden monstrosity clutching the coin. Opening his eyes fully, he looked around the tent, finding it empty. My grandfather tells me how throughout his life, Mr. Tickle Twist would return to continue the sick game of chance. Either my grandfather is the luckiest man alive or the game of chance wasn't as fair as it seemed because not once did the coin land on the top hat side. And with each wish, more tragedy would befall my grandfather. No matter how harmless the wish seemed, this thing would always twist it to hurt somebody he loved, his foster families, his wife, his co-workers, even the family dog fell prey to Mr. Tinkle Twist's deadly touch. Soon, my grandfather became a recluse, only allowing me into his life to do his weekly shopping as he is now too sickly to do it himself. I am now sitting next to my grandfather as he lays on his deathbed, babbling about how the game is finally over, manically moaning that Mr. Tickle Twist is coming to finally get him. I never knew what to make of his story. My mother would tell me he was just ill upstairs. But how does that explain all the strange deaths in our family? I really don't know what to believe, but over his nonsensical mumbling, very faintly I can swear I can hear the sound of wood creaking. Also, I hear what sounds like pencils or wooden streaks tapping on the bedroom door.